Freddie Prince Jr. recently confirmed in a new interview that Dave Filoni was responsible for the fan favorite Darth Vader scene at the end of Rogue One. This got a lot of Star Wars fans confused as the movie was directed by Gareth Edwards and it was not formally known that Dave Filoni had an impact on the film. While speaking with The Hollywood Reporter, Dave hints it might be true. He said he spent some time with Gareth on at least one occasion. Such a fan service moment is very Filoni like, so I wouldn't put it past him. But today, guys, we have some Mandalorian updates, so no more jibber jabber. Let's dive straight into it. Sometimes, even when we make the right decisions, there are repercussions and consequences that reverberate beyond. These are the words of Rick Famuyiwa in a brand new interview about Din removing his helmet. We're gonna come onto this later. But first of all, my dear friends, we have some new footage for The Mandalorian Season 3. This comes from the latest TV spot, which is called The Way. As Star Wars fans, even as we process the most recent episode, we're always looking to the next one. So while Chapter 17 was a chef's kiss of a premiere, we patiently await the next one, which according to those who are at the premiere, is even better than the first episode. So let's look at the new footage. Some of the new shots have leaked before and we have covered them, but there are one or two never before seen stills. Let's begin with Tatooine. We've seen this one before. On the bottom right, we see Pelimoto's hangar. This, according to what I've heard, is in the next episode. So before going to Mandalore, Din still needs a droid, as he expressed to grieve Karga. I don't think he's going to be able to repel IG-11 in time for his trip. He'll come back to Navarro for that project later in the season, but for now, we know he takes R5 from Pelimoto and then goes to Mandalore from there, so Tatooine is first. Could we see Boba Fett, Cobb Vanth or Fennec Shand? Well, I'd love to say yes, I simply don't know. I personally don't see how there's time. Apparently, the scene is brief. He just goes to Pelimoto, there's a few interactions, he takes the R5 droid and goes straight to Mandalore. We can always hope though. So next up, we have some different angles of Din on Mandalore, exploring the mind. At the end of chapter 17, Bo-Katan told him to look under the ruins of the Civic Center. This, of course, is on Sundari. And so then we have this amazing new shot of Katie O'Brien, who plays the unnamed comms officer from season 2. She's one of Gideon's remnants, and along with Pershing, she's gonna try and get him off Gideon freed. But here's the catch, guys. I don't think they're breaking him out of prison. Instead, they're going through the legal system with a very specific plan, and it looks like she might be a double agent, seemingly working for the New Republic after she escaped. But in reality, she's still loyal to Moff Gideon. She's an insider, maybe helping through the legal system to get him free. Grief Cogga told us that Gideon faces a New Republic war tribunal, and the only way for Gideon to prove his innocence and be a free man again is to show evidence he was acting in self-defense. The Knights Luke showed up, tore up the Dark Troopers, and saved Grogu. Now, while this won't absolve him entirely, and he has other crimes to answer for, I think he's gonna get Pershing and the comms officer to get the command lock from his ship, which we see in the Imperial shipyard on Coruscant in this trailer, and that will show a hologram of Luke terrorizing him and wrecking havoc on the cruiser. That's my theory, but if it does doesn't go well, of course Gideon has a plan B. I don't think a diplomatic solution's gonna work, and let's be real, when it comes down to it, he's gonna do whatever it takes to get free, as Giancarlo Esposito told us several times. And bear in mind, these aren't the only two working for him behind the scenes, there are probably others as well, he's always two steps ahead. Now there was a shot in the celebration footage that is impossible to find these days. Dr. Pershing was talking to a blue protocol droid, and I believe this droid could have been a legal assistant for the New Republic. Time will tell, they'll have a back and forth, they'll negotiate, but ultimately Gideon is such a threat, I don't see Mon Mothma letting him off the hook, so an eventual breakout might be in the cards, even if it's not plan A. I think Katie's character is doing a lot of the dirty work behind the scenes with Pershing, and I do hope they give her character a name this season. Most of the rest of the footage is stuff we've already seen before. And so now, guys, onto the comments made by Rick Famuyiwa. When it comes to his creative talents, he is such a visionary. He's got an insightful and perspicacious mind when it comes to Din's story, or the story of the Mandalorian at large. But in this interview, he talks about Din Djarin, his development, his mindset removing his helmet, and where the character is heading. Speaking with Skytalker's podcast, he mentions the interesting influence of being in a cult. He says despite Din's journey, he's still haunted by the tribe. 
the indoctrination, the programming. He didn't mention if Din is going to have a sort of redemption, if he's going to go through with it, or if he's going to pull out of the tribe, but it does sound as though he's still stuck. So despite all of the adventures so far in Season 1 and Season 2, in the Book of Boba Fett, Din Djarin fundamentally still has a very stubborn mindset of the tribe, the strictest rules of Mandalorian Creed. He can't shake those just yet. But something very fascinating he says is Bo-Katan's ideas and those of other Mandos, as well as the tribe, are going to be forced to intermingle. As I said before, they're going to face a reckoning. I think there's going to be a moment where they're going to have to say, look, do we work together to unite the planet? Do we draw a line in the sand? How do we work for a common goal while also having our differences? What is the nature of that compromise? That is something that Rick Fermi UR teases. And I think a crucial part of this interview is when he says season 3 is inspired by the kid, Charlie Chaplin's The Kid. It was a 1921 American silent comedy. John Favreau mentioned Paper Moon's influence, but now Rick is saying, also The Kid, especially for this season. The plot of that film was as follows. With much anguish, an unawed mother abandons her child, placing him in an expensive automobile with a handwritten note, please love and care for this orphan child. Two thieves steal the car and leave the baby in the alleyway, where he's found by the tramp. After several attempts to hand him off to various passers-by, he finds the note and his heart breaks. He takes the boy in, gives him a home, gives him the name John, and adjusts his household furniture for him. Meanwhile, the mother has a change of heart and returns for her baby when she learns the car had been stolen. Five years pass by, the kid and the tramp live in the same room. They have little money but much love for each other. They support themselves in a minor scheme. The kid throws stones to break windows and the tramp works as a glazier, offering to repair it for money. There is a lot more to this story when the paths of the mother and son cross, but I think the main themes are those of belonging, newfound family, and the struggles of making it through. I definitely see the parallels, but could he also be referring to the fact that Grogu has an identity crisis, just like the kid did to some extent? Are they going to be more hiccups along the way, very similar to when Luke took Grogu for training. Is Grogu going to find another Jedi? Could he spend some time with Ezra? Or is he definitively going down this route, becoming a Mandalorian? And how much does his relationship to his dad impact his view on his own future? In the case of Grogu, unlike the child, he has so many more years to think about it. He's got such a long future ahead of him, assuming he doesn't die. He's going to outlive his dad by like 800 years, and what he does from there is going to be fascinating. Does he stick with the Mandalorian creed? Is he going to be the Darksaber wielder by then. Some really vital comments by one of the most talented directors on the show. And bear in mind, he directed episode 1, he also has 7 and 8, so the season finale and the penultimate episode should be very consistent. And John Favreau seems to have found his mojo once again. The writing on chapter 17 was brilliant. Now, I don't know if you guys have tried this, but when you go to Google and you type in The Mandalorian, there is this adorable graphic of Grogu. Every time you click on him, he dislocates different parts of the screen using the Force. It works on both desktop and mobile, a very fun and somewhat addictive little graphic. And just before I go, I want to address something that a couple of you have brought up. Am I ever going to do Bad Batch breakdowns ever again? I have spoken about the last two episodes, but I haven't done breakdowns for either of them. Until episode 10, I did do breakdowns for the entire season so far. Don't worry, I will be doing full episode breakdowns for the rest of the Bad Batch season too. But over the last two weeks, I was focused on The Mandalorian. But going forward, you can expect more of a sense of normalcy when it comes to my breakdowns. I'll be doing both The Mandalorian and The Bad Batch. The Mandalorian on Wednesday, and The Bad Batch the next day. Season 2 episode 11 Metamorphosis brought the goods. Such an amazing episode. In yesterday's video at the end, I spoke about an Omega theory that could be coming true. Go check it out if you haven't done so. But with that said, my dear friends, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and if you want more videos that you can't find here on YouTube while also getting access to our Discord server and so much more, then click the link down there in the description. But until the next one, guys, may the force be with you always.